Hey friends, Sam Haymar for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving a 2014 Toyota Highlander Limited. This is a beautiful black on black example with chrome wheels and it's just going to be a shame to get it a little bit dusty. Well, not really. You know, if you watch my reviews, you're probably asking yourself, didn't he just drive the Highlander about three weeks ago? Well, you'd be right, I did. And in that review, we never left the pavement. We sort of treated the Highlander like a family car. We went from schools to shopping malls, uh, as if we were living with the thing every day, like most folks are gonna do. But we've got a different Highlander today, and this is a limited, few different options, but I think the big takeaway today is I want to find out if this thing can behave like an SUV, like it's sold to be. So today, we're taking it off the pavement. Out here at the foot of Arizona's Superstition Wilderness, there's no shortage of places to drive off into the wild and challenge any SUV. Sometimes the best scenery can only be found off the beaten path. The 2014 Highlander is all new in styling with a healthier dose of chrome and sculpted lines than last year's model. While the previous generation wasn't boring by any means, the new Highlander has a lot more presence. Our Attitude Black Limited all-wheel drive tester has upgraded 19-inch chrome tech wheels which are actually clad with a plastic chrome cover over an aluminum wheel. The look is significantly more upscale than the XLE we last tested. The 2014 model grows 3 inches longer than the previous generation, yet retains its 109-inch wheelbase. This contributes to its heftier silhouette as much of that size increase goes to the rear to make room for now three third-row passengers. Like the XLE, the Highlander Limited has integrated chrome roof rails in which a variety of accessory crossbars can be attached. Out back is a power lift gate with flip-up rear window, very handy when out exploring or camping. A limited platinum, our Highlander gave us generous trappings like sumptuous leather seats with contrast French stitching, accent color soft trims, and warm wood grain appliques on the dash and door panels. Going platinum on a limited brings you the driver technology suite of radar based cruise control, pre collision system, lane departure warning, and automatic headlamps, offerings the last generation was missing. This brought also a large panoramic sunroof with opening front panel, a very cool touch that brightens up the otherwise dark interior. Front seats were heated and ventilated, the rear captain's chairs and steering wheel also heated. Optional second row captain's chairs feature both sliding and reclining adjustments and can fold down out of the way for ease of access to the third row. That third row seating got wider for 2014, now making room for three passengers, courtesy of a new rear suspension design. This makes the space wider, which also translates to more cargo space in the rear. With several ways to fold the rear seating, both third and second rows, you can accommodate any number of cargo and passenger scenarios. The dash design is handsome to look at with a full width goodie shelf for whatever you bring with you. It's padded so things should stay put while on the go. In the center is a large touchscreen navigation and audio system with Toyota's Entune app suite. The JBL Green Edge sound system offered up bass thumping sound, but we found the database used for the NAV system to be a little out of date. We searched a store and followed its directions for a half hour only to find the place it closed over a year ago. A bit frustrating. As we said before, the interior of the Highlander is a pretty nice place to be. It's very comfortable for long rides. It's certainly comfortable out here on the rough stuff. And just like last time we tested the Highlander, the only big issue that I really see in the design in here is the fact that this infotainment system here is really too far away to easily reach without actually having to go forward a little bit and the way it's canted towards the uh, windshield a little bit it's always in the sun's glare it's not really shrouded so it's often hard to see because the sun's usually shining on it driving the highlander off the pavement showed some positives however starting with an exceptionally solid body structure on gravel and washboard roads the doors held solid in their frames and the ride was free of crashing and rattling from the suspension one of the advantages the Highlander has is the 19-inch wheel combination that's on this fully loaded model. A lot of top trim levels on its competitors, they push you up into a 20 or even a 22-inch wheel, which really lowers the side profile of the tire. Here, you still have a 55 series tire, which while isn't a super tall one, it gives you a much better ride out here on the rougher surfaces and really makes this vehicle more able to take them on. 
Handling on the rougher trails proved nimble and sharp, allowing the Highlander to be easily placed where you wanted it to avoid hazards like boulders and tree branches. While it's a good sized crossover SUV, it never seemed too big. New for 2014 in the Highlander is what Toyota calls Dynamic Torque Control All-Wheel Drive. And basically it's a fuel saving all-wheel drive system that's passive and that means up front you've got 100% of the power most of the time. It'll only send power to the back wheels if it detects slippage and you suddenly need it or if you're under full acceleration at which time it can send up to 50% of the torque to the rear axle to give you a sure-footed feel. And what's pretty slick is there's actually a readout here on the instrument cluster that allows you to watch how the system's acting and where it's sending torque. The Highlander's 3.5 liter V6 is silky smooth and with its six-speed automatic transmission makes for a willing friend out here crawling around in the trails or on the highway. As I said before, it's one of the most refined powertrains in its class. What I really do like about the Highlander is that you can actually use it like an SUV. So many of these crossovers have gone so far towards the car side of it that you can't always really credibly use them out here in the back trails. And so this is a vehicle that you can actually take camping, you can take it hiking and go maybe a little further up into the mountains where you wouldn't normally go. Um, it's got eight inches of ground clearance so you know you can get into some rougher roads not necessarily heavy off-roading but you can go places that a car certainly can't and best of all when you get into the fully loaded one like this it can tow about 5,000 pounds so it's got a pretty good tow rating it really will let you use it like an SUV the EPA rates the 2014 Highlander limited all-wheel drive at 18 miles per gallon city 24 miles per gallon highway and 20 miles per gallon combined we achieved about 19.5 miles per gallon combined this week in our testing, a little less than the rating, but keep in mind the air conditioning was on at all times, and most of our driving was doing exactly what you see here, off in the desert. The Highlander is a very strong choice in this class, not only because of its all new design, but the versatility and the features it now has for 2014. But you know what my big takeaway is? It's the fact that even though it is a car based crossover, you can still use it like an SUV out here in the rough. It doesn't come apart at the seams when you get it off the pavement. So this week I give it four out of five stars. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Okay, Woo. this is the freaking desert, man. Look at that, that is wicked evil right there. That's called, that's actually called jumping choya. If you ever step on that stuff, God help you.